Pope John Paul II was a very vocal advocate of human rights, an ardent admirer of the outdoors, and a pope who was very well known for truly lying his life for God and the Catholic faith as well. Born in 1920 in Poland, John Paul became a pope in the year 1978 and led a life of discipline as you would expect from a pope. Here is a day in the life of Pope John Paul II. The morning. Between the time 5 and 5.30 early in the morning, John Paul II used to get up after his mere six and a half hours of sleep, and he woke up by himself without anyone else making the effort to wake the holy saint up. Even though an alarm clock was spotted in his bedroom, he was never known to be actively using one. Immediately after waking up, he would take a moment to pray, followed by a cold shower, which the Pope claimed to be healthier, as mentioned by his papal secretary. After his cold morning shower, the Pope used to get ready to go to the chapel for meditation and holy mass. Upon reaching the chapel before the mass, the Holy Father would slowly read out the names of all the Vatican staff from two sheets of paper to bless them all before the mass. After mass, the Pope went on to the library to engage in a short conversation with those who had taken part in the morning Eucharist. After these guests left, he proceeded to the chapel to pray. After the chapel, the pontiff engaged in breakfast, post that he would begin his workday. When he would be on his way back to his apartment, he would leave through the press and at his bedroom desk, the Pope read liturgical texts and reflections on experts from scriptures and then would proceed to review and sign official documents. Two large files were sent to the secretariat every day, one in the morning and one at night. All of the documents would be neatly arranged and separated into files according to the different levels of priority, which included documents that required the Pope's signature on them. It also included correspondence from the cardinals, bishops, and state officials, along with letters forwarded to the attention of the Pope from the Secretary of State, the substitutes, congregation prefects, and finally the press office. He paid equal and undivided attention to all of them. He would also add comments as and where needed or would have them conveyed immediately if the situation demanded so. From 9 in the morning, John Paul II would dictate his speeches, addresses, and sermons to be used later on. He would never fail to dictate from memory, and all of the things he said would be very precise and would require no corrections at all. From 11 to 12.30, he would depart to the terrace of the Apolistic Palace and address his audiences, after which he would return to the chapel. The afternoon and the evening. At 1.30, the guests invited for lunch would gather in the Apolistic Palace, where the Pope would greet them all and lead them to the chapel for a small prayer, and the chapel was visited again after the meal. John Paul II would engage himself in prayer again after the guests were seen off. From 3 to 4.30, the Pope spent time taking a bit of rest while he read as much literature as he could. After reading books, at 5, the Holy Father would recite the Vespers, after which he would sign a different batch of documents which would be around 30 or 40 in number. From 6 to 7.30, the different audiences would be attended to by the inner circle of John Paul II's collaborators. These would be the Secretary of State on Mondays and Thursdays, the Head of General Affairs Section at the Secretariat on Tuesdays, the Vatican Minister of Foreign Affairs on Wednesdays, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, and finally, on Sundays, the Prefect for the Congregation for Bishops. At night. After this, the Pope would have dinner, followed by listening to books from 9 to 10.30, which ranged from literature through history to theology and dogmatics, which he was very fond of in terms of the authors and their specific works. At 10.30, John Paul II would follow his Polish tradition and would sing a brief hymn to Our Lady of Czestoszowa at the end of his day. He would go to bed by 11 and conclude his day. So, what are your thoughts about the disciplined lifestyle of John Paul II? Do you think that the current Pope would be living by the same sort of schedule as well? Let's know in the comments section.